of 10 Photoshop software for the spring 2022 semester. My name is Jessica Kern. I will be your instructor this semester. In this video, I want to uh, welcome you to the course, tell you a little bit about myself, but most importantly, I want to talk about what you should expect in this course this semester and how to get started and uh, talk about tips for being successful. So the first thing we need to do is we need to log into the course. And if I open a little incognito window here, which doesn't do anything for my lighting, um, I can show you that you can go to slcc.instructure, I-N-S-T-R-U-C-T-U-R-E dot com to get to uh, Canvas. When you get there, you will log in using your full Brew Mail email address and then the password for that. If you prefer, you can also go to the SLCC website, I've got to move my little picture over, and click My SLCC and then Canvas. And you can also go to my.slcc.edu, and then there's a link somewhere on there. I like to just type in uh, slcc.instructure.com and go right there. When you log in, you should see our course, and to get started, you'll click on it. If you don't see our course, you need to go to my.slcc.edu and just double check that you are enrolled in the course. And then if you still don't see it, you can call the help desk at 801-957-5555. Or if you prefer email, you can email them at help.desk at slcc.edu. You can tell them I'm enrolled in this course, but it's not showing up in Canvas. Uh, I am telling you in this video that it is published. Uh, it, it is there. So if you can't see it, it's an issue with the college. Once you are logged in and you can see our course, go ahead and click on it. Art 1280 has no prerequisites, so I don't expect you to be a Photoshop master before you take it, and also is a requirement for all visual art and design students. However, if you're not a visual art and design student, you're still welcome to take this course. It's set up to basically start assuming that you know nothing about Photoshop and teach foundational skills um, that set you up for success as you continue with your Photoshop studies. Um, this course covers, I would say, introduction through intermediate Photoshop and then uh, the way that it's structured is that if you're interested let's say in illustration after you take this course you can take a digital painting course which would be an advanced Photoshop course for illustration or we have an advanced Photoshop course for graphic design or for photography or for multimedia but this course sets the foundation for all of those programs. Okay so to get started you have a visual home page and on that visual home page uh, if you read it, um, it will say the best way to get started is to complete the orientation unit. So we're going to do that together. Um, well, we're going to kind of skim through it together. Uh, but that's our goal. We're going to get to that and go through that. But before we do that, I want to point out a few things. The visual home page has everything you need for the entire course. So if you prefer, you can navigate everything through the home page. Uh, there's a calendar. Print the calendar. Go ahead and click on that. I highly recommend that you print the calendar because literally it says everything you have to do for the entire semester and you can cross things off as you do that. If you like to make lists as much as I like to make lists, then this calendar is for you. Uh, if it overwhelms you to see all of it, maybe it's not the calendar for you, but I do recommend printing it so that you have it if you need it. In addition, the bottom half of the visual homepage has all of your coursework. So if you're on, I don't know, lesson 17, which is in unit five, you can click on unit five, then click on, I'm gonna open it in a new tab, click on lesson 17, and then it will navigate you to exactly where you need to be to do lesson 17. In addition to the visual homepage, uh, well the visual homepage also has due dates on it, which I think is important. So if we're, let's say that we finish our orientation and we move on to unit one, you can see all the due dates for unit one. You can even see that the last day to submit any work for unit one is a week after the unit ends. Um, so keep that in mind. We'll talk about that when we get to the syllabus. In addition to the visual homepage, uh, there are some tabs over here on the left hand side. The announcements tab is what I would like you to do as the first thing every single time you log into the course. I will post a course announcement if I have something that needs to be shared with the entire class and it's not already embedded into the course. If I, if I record an extra video for a demo, I will put it on the page for that lesson but I will also send it out as a course announcement in case you've already gone past that lesson. So if you wanted to watch the video, you can. If I have information about scholarships or job opportunities, I'll send it through here. You can see that there are um, 
a number of preset announcements that you get during the first week, which I unlocked the class on Monday the 3rd, even though class doesn't start to the 10th, and one, two, three, four, four of these announcements, I just kind of sent them out on the 3rd. And then next week, when the class actually starts on Monday the 10th, I'm recording this for your reference on Friday, January 7th. Um, on the 10th, I'm going to send out three more announcements with information. Uh, what I want you to do is make sure that you read all of these announcements as the first thing that you do. Once you've read them, click on home, and then you can get started with your coursework. I number my announcements so that if you know that you left off on eight and now there's ten, you only have to read two more. You don't have to remember which ones um, you haven't read and that kind of thing. Okay, the syllabus is the next tab down. The syllabus is a lifeline for a course. It should outline everything that you need to do in a course. So I want you to read through it. I'm going to pick out a couple key things. So if you're in multiple of my classes, a lot of these key things are the same, but there's one very specific thing that I would like you to do on the ART 12 to, uh, 1280 course syllabus. So pay attention. Okay, you can read through the course description, all that good stuff. Um, I'm gonna skip these learning objectives. Uh, some of the things that are common that you should pull out on all syllabi are that this is a fully online course. The format of the course is online. You do not need to come to campus for any reason whatsoever in this course. It's not a requirement. However, you may come to campus if you want to. The Visual Art and Design Department has open computer labs, which are listed on the course syllabus, that you could use. Um, you might want to just come in and work to be around other people sometimes. Um, or maybe your internet's down or your Photoshop's not working, you can always come to campus and use it. In addition, um, your exams, your tests, everything will be submitted through Canvas, so you do not have to come to campus to take an exam. Some of your other classes might use the testing center. We don't use it. It's all through Canvas. Okay, some other key highlights. Um, for this course, there is no required textbook. Um, Whitney, King, Hines, and I, another professor here at Salt Lake Community College, we essentially wrote a book that we've embedded into the course. So the book is in the course and you will see it when you need to see it. Um, so you don't need to buy that. But you do need to have a working computer and you need to have access to Photoshop. Um, so the computer's on you. If you don't have a computer, you can come to campus, obviously. But Photoshop is free. And I'm going to click on this link. It wasn't working the other day. Ah, it's working again. Okay, so this link will tell you how to access or to download free Adobe CC. If it doesn't work, you can just go to adobe.com and you're going to sign in and you're going to sign in with your Bruin mail. When you do that, it's going to redirect you and say, oh, I recognize that. That's a corporate account. And then you're going to put in your password for your Bruin Mail account. I don't want to go into too much detail on that, but essentially you'll follow that. The orientation unit will walk through that as well. So you don't need to purchase any supplies for this class except for you need to have a computer. I don't want you to buy a computer if you don't have one. If you don't have one, you can just come to campus um, and you can use our computers here. Okay, um, how will you be graded in this course? So first and foremost, Grading is compiled based on the units, so each unit has a different weighted percentage. So down here you can see that unit 0 is worth 5% of your grade, so the orientation is worth 5%. Unit 1, which is the biggest unit of the semester, is worth 25%. Unit 2 is 22%, etc. So it's not, it's not like um, most classes where your exams are weighted and your homework is weighted differently. In this case, everything you do for unit 1 after you finished it is worth 25% of your grade. Inside each unit will be a series of lessons, and so essentially you will do a series of lessons. Each lesson will have what is called a skills practice. It's a way for you to practice what you're learning in Photoshop, and it will have a knowledge test. Knowledge tests have two attempts, so you can take it again. Um, both of those activities are formative assessments, meaning they're practice. I want you to practice. You can. I'm not expecting you to master what you submit on your skills practice. Um, if something's wrong, I'll tell you it's wrong, and I'll ask you to fix it, and you can fix it and resubmit it. And then your major assessments, the ones that actually assess whether you can apply what you're learning, 
um, are at the end of a unit. So for unit one, I believe there are six or seven lessons. So you'll do lesson one, skills practice knowledge test, lesson two, skills practice knowledge test, and you'll do that for lesson one, two, three, four, five, and six. At the end of the unit, there will be an exam and a creative project. I'll talk about them when we get to the modules. If you are interested, there are five creative projects that are due throughout the semester, one for each of the units. So unit zero, zero is the orientation, doesn't really count. But units one, two, three, four, and five have an exam and a project at the end. If you want to, you can click on these links here and you can take a look at those projects now so you get an idea of what you should be working on. Um, you don't have to at this point. You might want to just kind of glance at them and see. And then if you are interested um, to see how much volume of work is within each lesson, I've kind of mapped it out here. So you can see that unit one has a time management worksheet that's worth 10 points. There are six lessons, which means there are six knowledge tests that are 10 points each. There are six lessons, so there are six skills practices. There is one creative project worth 100 points and one exam. So you can see that essentially the knowledge tests are 60 points, the skills practices are 60, the homework, I mean not the homework, the project and the exam are 100, so they're weighted heavier um, within the unit. If you're interested in how you can get an A or what percentage you need for each grade, this is the grading scheme that I use. It's not typical. I don't like to give minus grades. So other than an A minus, I don't give minuses. So if you were to earn an 81, I, don't, I won't enter a B minus. It will just be a B. Um, I don't like to do that because students get confused when they get like a C minus in particular. They think, oh, I got a C, so I pass. Um, I can count that as the prereq for the next course. And then they, a year and a half later, go to take that course and they find out you need a C or higher, not a C minus or higher. So I just, I don't do it. I don't give minus grades other than an A minus. Okay, deadlines and late work. Um, I first and foremost expect all coursework to be submitted on time. So I'm not, I'm not talking about late work in the sense that I encourage it. I, I expect you to get it in on time. It's best if you get it in on time. But I know that it's an online class. I know sometimes you forget to log in and you panic and you miss something and it kind of snowballs. You know, other classes have a lot of work and you panic or whatever. So if you need to turn work in late, I have a relatively flexible late policy. My policy is that late work is only about 10%, whether it's one minute late or one month late. So it doesn't matter how late it is, it'll only be 10%. Some classes will be 10% per day, it's just 10%. Um, and you can submit late work as long as we're still working on a unit. So on the home page, so we'll come back here. On the home page, at the bottom of each unit, so the orientation is unit zero, zero, it will say the last day to submit late work for that unit and it'll have a date. So let's look at unit one because there's a lot of work in unit one. So for unit one, you are going to get started in the unit and complete lessons one by Saturday, January 15th. If for some reason that you don't get lesson one in by the 15th, you can submit it late all the way through the unit. So the unit will end when the exam is due on February 9th. And then one week after that is when the unit will lock. So all of the assignments are already set up to lock. And so if you miss lesson one and you have to turn it in on the 16th or the 17th or the 18th of January, please do so because it's okay to submit late. Um, just make sure that when you're getting close to the end of the unit that you make note that the very last day to submit any late work for the unit is February 16th because everything will lock and you will not be able to submit after that. Let's go back to the syllabus. So that kind of wraps up the general stuff I usually talk about on a syllabus. But more importantly, I want you to scroll down to where it says Art 1280 Unit Learning Objectives. These are, so the course has an overall objective. They're called outcomes. And you can read them here. Course outcomes are broad. Like you will learn how to manipulate photos. You will apply best practices for non-destructive editing. So they are, they're broad and oftentimes they don't make a lot of sense, but the overall broad goals for the class are the learning outcomes for the class. But in this course, every lesson has kind of small micro learning objectives that essentially they scaffold to those. So in order to achieve those five course level learning outcomes, we are going to do all the things that are listed 
under the unit objectives. Ignore unit one, that's kind of like just generic how to get started in your course. But when you click on unit zero, zero, when you click on unit one, all of the things that we're going to do for every single lesson are listed. So you can see in lesson one to launch Photoshop, we are going to do all of these things. And for lesson two, creating new documents, understanding the workspace, and you can kind of see. Why it's important is twofold. One, I want you to see just kind of the volume of content that we're required to cover in this course. It's a lot, which is why it's really important that you stay on track to get your coursework submitted on time. But secondly, many students will say to me, I already know how to do this. I don't want to take this course. I want to take the advanced course. Um, if that's the case, we don't test students out of a course because you don't get credit for it in the art department. But what you can do is you can test into an advanced course. So if your program requires Art 1280, but you're like, I already know all this, I've taken Photoshop courses. Um, what you can do is you can approach the advanced course, the advanced digital painting course, the advanced photo for photo Photoshop for photographers course, the one for graphic design, the one for multimedia, whatever's in your program. You can approach them and say, I want to take your class, and you can test into it. But before you do that, you should take a look at all of the things that we cover. Because if you know everything, you should obviously move on to the advanced course. But a lot of the times, the first unit kind of goes a little slow because we're getting everybody up to speed. So you might think, oh, well, lesson one, I'm just learning how to open a document and save it. That's kind of basic. Um, you should also see where we're going to get by the end of the semester. So click through unit two and unit three and unit four and kind of kind of skim over it to see kind of everything that we're going to cover this semester. Okay, so now that we've talked about the visual homepage, kind of how to navigate that, and we've talked about the announcements and the syllabus, um, your grades tab I'm not going to talk about. The chat tab is where I host my office hours, which um, if I haven't already mentioned it, um, I Everyone has their strengths and their weaknesses. Uh, my weakness is email. I'm bad at email and I apologize in advance. In order to try to tackle that, um, I don't want you to email me. Visit me during office hours. Use the chat to leave me a message. The only time I want you to send me a message through the Canvas inbox is if it's something private that nobody else can see. Otherwise, I want you to use this chat tab and I want you to visit me during office hours, which will be every Monday and Thursday from 2 to 3 p.m. And if you can't log in during that time, the chat is a log. It will always be here. So if I write hi and I leave and I come back, the message will still be there. So you can say, hi, Jessica, hi, Professor Curry, whatever you want to call me. I have a question about the knowledge test for lesson six. I have the following question. Can you answer it? And then as soon as I log in for office hours, I'll answer it. And you can pop back in whenever's convenient for you to see the answer. So please only use the inbox if it's something that cannot be shared publicly. If you're struggling with something with a concept or you're doing something in Photoshop and it's not working and you want me to troubleshoot it for you, there's a good chance that the same thing might be happening for someone else in the class. So if you leave me a message and someone else pops in, they might see that you already asked the question and I already answered it and I, we can save them a few minutes of time. Okay, so my office hours are every Monday and Thursday from 2 to 3 p.m. In addition, I will host what I call live info sessions every Monday from 3 to 4 p.m. Well, they're at 3 and they will end when they end, uh, but they will end by 4 because I have um, another live session for another class at 4. The way that you'll access these is you'll click on the Zoom tab. I haven't set them up yet, but when I set them up, you'll see a whole long list of days and times, and it will be every Monday for the entire semester. The way that I handle my live info sessions is that they are your time. So if you show up and you have questions, I'll answer your questions. If no one shows up or people show up and they don't have questions, uh, I'll take a few minutes to review what you should be working on that, sem that semester, that week. Uh, and then I'll also kind of highlight usually like the number one thing students get wrong this week or this is the hardest thing that I find or um, here's a tip for when you're doing that thing uh, for the lesson. Um, I like to keep the priority for these live info sessions for whatever we're covering that week. So let's look at the printable calendar. So during week one of the semester, we're doing the orientation and we're doing unit one. So if you come to the live info session, my priority will be to answer questions about unit zero zero and uh, getting started in unit one and lesson one. 
if you have already worked ahead on your lesson seven, you can by all means come to the live info session. But I'm going to answer the questions for the, the, the current week first. And then if there's time, I'll answer for previous weeks or future weeks um, if you're behind or if you're ahead. Okay. Last but not least. Last but not least, let's talk about how you're going to do your coursework. So to get to your coursework, you can click on the Modules tab on the left-hand side. I'm going to open that in a new tab for now. When you do that, you'll see that it takes you to the modules. And if you scroll, there are a lot of modules in this course. Another option is if, let's say, that you're ready to start Lesson 1. You can click on Unit 1 and then click on Lesson 1. It will also take you to the Modules page but this time it will kind of snap that lesson to the top so you don't have to scroll and find it. What I recommend is as you finish a module, if it's done, collapse it so that the first module that's open is the one that you have to work on the next time you come in. Okay, let's put this into student mode because there's something I need to show you that's specific about getting started. And we'll reset the student mode. When you are ready to get started, for the very first time in this course, you need to navigate to Unit 00, which is the Getting Started Unit, which is also the first module. And essentially, you are going to work your way from the top of the module to the bottom, and that applies for basically the entire semester. You're going to work your way from the top of the module page all the way down to the bottom of the modules page. What is special is that right now you can see that the orientation is very large, and I apologize about that. Um, if you scroll, all of the other content for the course is locked. So before you can get started with anything with your actual coursework for ART 1280, you need to complete all the activities in the orientation. Over here, there's a circle, but as you do the assignments, it will become checks. So your goal is to have checks all the way down the line. When you have all the checks, um, you will be able to unlock the rest of the course, and then you can get started. I do not want to do the orientation with you, but I am going to click through so that you can see, and I'll point out a few key things. Every, um, every unit starts with a unit overview that kind of says this is what you will do in the unit, and this is why you're doing it. So the first half is you are going to read all of these pages, and then you're going to do all of these things, and this these objectives are why you're going to do that. See how the page is now green? If I refresh my modules, the first activity, Unit 00 Overview, I now have a green check mark. I want to see that green check mark all the way down to the bottom. Getting started is basically what I'm covering in this video, so you should be able to skim through it, but it's kind of a welcome, this is how you navigate the course. What does it mean to take ART 1280 online? Um, we offer on-campus, online, and flipped classroom hybrid versions of this course. Um, so read this page, take it seriously, because an online class is right for some students and it's wrong for others and it's perfectly okay. Uh, it requires independence, it requires a lot of work, it requires you to be a self-learner, and if that's not the case, we have other sections, and there are seats available in those sections so we can get you switched, but make sure you read through this and kind of take it to heart and really talk to yourself honestly about whether or not you should be taking the fully online class. This next uh, page outlines all the technology requirements for the course, so make sure you read through that. You can see that you need to use Canvas, you need a basic computer, but you also need to be able to install uh, Photoshop and things like that. The Visual Art and Design Department offers help for students. We have tutoring in our lab, so if you need help, um, there's information on how to get help, um, whether it's for this course there's um, information in here to get help for all college courses and, and things like that. Make sure you read through these pages. What I would like you to do is kind of take notes on what is important to you at the time, but also note that if you need to reference it or you need to go back, this is where you go, go back to the orientation unit. I've included information about SLCC pathways. This really only applies to undecided students, so if you're like not sure what program you want, read through these pages. Um, SLCC Pathways is a general thing, and then the next page will talk specifically about visual art and design. So if you are undecided and you happen to be in this course, this is a visual art and design course, so here's some more information about the visual art and design programs. And then our very first lesson of the semester is what is image manipulation. So this is the first chapter in the textbook. 
So I'd like you to read through that, um, get used to the format of this is how all of the lessons are presented. You can open them in full screen mode if that's helpful. But also there is a link to Google Drive for those of you that want to download the lessons, if you want to print the lessons, that you can get them from there. Bookmark this page. And then after you've done all of your reading assignments, there are a few activities that you have to do. So you're going to take a quiz. Um, uh, not this quiz. So you're next going to download and install Adobe Photoshop, and then there's a quiz that you take to basically say, yes, I did install Photoshop and I was able to open it and no I don't have any questions or more importantly if you have questions put them here about installing Photoshop and I will answer them. Okay, The next quiz is your syllabus quiz or your orientation quiz. You're going to take the quiz, you get unlimited attempts and if you have read your course announcements there is an announcement that basically tells you what questions are going to be on the quiz. Questions to answer, Unit 1. All of these questions are the questions that you will see on your syllabus or your orientation quiz. So what I would recommend is print these questions and answer them as you are reviewing the orientation unit. Let's go ahead and submit that without any answers. Again, if we go back to our modules, you can see as I read these pages and as I do these assignments, I'm getting these green check marks. I still have a few more. Clear that. Um, I would like you to practice using a discussion board because all of your skills practices are submitted on a discussion. So read through the requirements and then submit this discussion. You can see some of your classmates have already done that. There is an initial response activity, which essentially is an opportunity for you to ask any lingering questions about getting started in the quiz, I mean, in the course. You can either say, nope, I'm good, I'm confident, I'm moving on to unit one, or I'm struggling and I have these questions. The only wrong answer is not asking questions. If you say, I'm lost, or I don't know what I'm doing, but you don't ask specific questions, I have nowhere to start to try to help you. So we'll submit this. Sorry. So in order to open the rest of the modules, I need to do that. Introduce yourself to the class. Post. So we were here. Okay, so we did our initial response. And then that wraps up the orientation unit. Um, oh, I'm sorry. No, it doesn't. I thought that was the end. There's another one here. Um, the last activity I would like you to do is to upload a profile picture. It's worth like no points at all. It's like five. It's a drop in the bucket. Um, but if you are going to upload a profile picture, I want it to be a professional picture. It should be only you in the picture. It should be close up. It shouldn't be a, um, a cartoon. You can upload your profile picture by clicking on account. Um, and you don't have to submit anything. I will grade it at the end of the first week of the semester. And then that wraps up our orientation unit. The next page that we go to is a recap. It will be at the end of every unit, but essentially these are the things that you accomplished by completing the orientation unit. And there's usually like a, hey, now it's time to go on to unit one. This is the next thing you'll work on. And there's a link, or you can always hit next. But now if we go back to the modules tab, you'll see that we have green check marks all the way down our orientation unit. And if we collapse that unit, you can see that all the rest of the modules for the entire semester are now unlocked, and you can get started. So the very last thing that I want to show in this video is how each lesson will look when you get started. There is a lesson page, consider it your lecture page. So it will be information about what you're going to learn. It will tell you, oh, you know what, I lied to you, I clicked the wrong thing. So when you start your unit, there will be like, this is what the unit is. You can read through that on your own. I want to talk about lesson one. So lesson one, launching Photoshop, this is your lecture page. Um, and basically it will say, hey, this is a little bit about what we're doing, and these are the goals of that lesson. These are the same objectives that you looked at on your syllabi. And then there's a reading assignment, which is written in textbook form. In theory, 
everything that you need to do for this lesson, you should be able to do after reading the chapter in the book. And then in addition, um, I have embedded resources that are helpful, but these are optional. What I would like you to do is to read the lesson and then complete the knowledge test and the skills practice. And if you need more help or it's a topic that you're interested in, then jump in and look at the supplemental resources. If you commit to reading every page that I link to and watching every video that I link to, this course is gonna take you 50 hours a week. So these are optional and you should only use them if it's something you're really interested in or a specific topic that you need a little review in. Once you have completed your lesson, there is a knowledge test. You get two attempts, it's a quiz. There's no time limit on these. So I might even open them, take the quiz, open it before you even start the lesson. And then as you're doing the lesson, if you see one of the answers, mark the answer. You do get two attempts. You might not get the same questions on both attempts, but you do get to do a second attempt if you didn't, didn't, um, didn't do as well as you wanted. And then last but not least, there is a skills practice. It's submitted as a discussion. So for the first few skills practices, you will, you will submit them and they're kind of boring. They're kind of all the same. But the reason that we submit them as discussions is because after we start doing creative things in Photoshop, you're gonna be posting your creative work in the discussion for the class to see. So the first couple where you have to screenshot, I opened Photoshop, I created a new document, whatever. Um, those are kind of boring, but the reason we're doing it is so that all skills practices are submitted the same way, but eventually just know it'll be, hey, I made this really cool type, or I applied this adjustment layer, or I did X, Y, and Z, and everything you post will be your own personal creative work. To submit a skills practice, um, you will need to embed images from either Google Drive or from a file sharing website. There is a video to watch. Please, please, please watch the video and then you can submit your coursework. Okay, that wraps up getting started in ARC 1280. I know this video was long, um, but if you have any questions, visit me during the chat, either during or outside of office hours, or um, in the initial response activity, ask some questions.